Hey guys, right now we are going to talk about Linux file system permissions, and it's easy. It's easy because we only have three permissions. Those permissions are read, write, and execute. Every file has got 10 bits that are associated with it. The value of the first bit kind of determines the kind of file. So if it's a D, it's a directory. If it's a, just a dash, it's a normal file. If it's a link, uh, it would have an L for a symbolic link. Um, if it's a, a block-based file, as you saw early on, it would have a B. And the value of the first bit determines the kind of file. The remaining nine would be the permissions. Now, you're looking at that and saying, what? You said nine? Didn't you just tell me that there are three permissions? Yeah, there are indeed three permissions. However, those permissions can be applied to three different entities. The three different entities would be the user. We have the group for the next three, and then the final three would be for other. And I'll explain that more in a, in a moment. When you create a file, you're the owner of that file, and that is who the you refers to, the user that is associated with the file. So more explicitly, this would refer to the owning user. Now, when you create a file, you are logged in as a user, and that user has got a group. This would be the primary group. Now, the group that is associated by default with a newly created file would be the user's primary group. And that is what would be the G, or the owning group. Everyone who is not the logged in user, or the user that is associated with that file, or a member of the owning group that is associated with that file, would be qualified by other. So we could have read, write, and execute associated with the owning user, read, write, and execute associated with members of the owning group, as well as read, write, and execute associated with other. So let's get our hands dirty right now. So we are going to create a directory called slash common. So let's go and take care of that. And the directory is uh, just being created. So let's go and do a listing right now of the directory. Now, if you want to see a perm the permissions associated with a directory, you would use ls-ld. Now, the D is really important over here because otherwise what's going to happen is that the ls command is going to show you the contents of the directory common. And it's not going to show you the properties associated with a common directory. So you can see again over here, guys, that we have uh, 10 bits. Feel free to count them. And you can see that the value of the first bit is a D. This tells us that it's a directory. And then we have nine more bits over here. And here we have the permissions. So RW and X would be associated with that component over there. That is the owning user or the user that is associated with the file. We also have uh, the owning group over here right next door. And that is root. And the next three bits would be the permissions for the owning group. And then the final three would be the permissions for other. Again, other means everyone who is not the owning user and everyone who is not a member of the owning group. So let's go and try and give the student user access uh, to this directory right now. So do we just want the student user to be able to change into the directory? If so, well, the student user already can do that. And here's why. We always evaluate permissions in the order that we've defined them, UGO. So is the student user the owning user of that directory? The answer is no. Root is the owning user. So these permissions are not going to be applicable. So guys, we stop at the first match. We process no further. We don't have a match, so we're allowed to continue processing. Is the student user a member of the group that is associated with that file? So we don't know. Let's go and find out. We're going to say groups, students. And we can see that student is a member of the group student, as well as the group wheel. And uh, that is not what the owning group is. So now we are allowed to process further. And you can see over here that we have uh, the permissions for other. Now, because the user student is not the owning user and not a member of the owning group, the user student is qualified by other. And therefore, the student user has got read and execute permissions, which are perfectly sufficient to change into a directory and to do a directory listing. So let's go and put that to the test right now. We're going to change into the directory common, and we're going to do a directory listing. That's it. Nice and simple. But let's find out right now if we can create a file. So we're going to create a file called student.file1. And you can see that permission denied. And that again is it's resoundingly clear as to why. We don't have the W permission or the right permission. So let's go and find out how we could go about giving the user student the right permission. Now to change permissions, we use a command called chmod, which is used to change the permissions mode. So what I could do over here is that I could say, I'm going to give other the W permission. Now be very careful over here that other doesn't mean everyone. Other means everyone who is not the owning user, everyone who is not a member of the owning group. So we're going to give other um, permissions to, uh, to slash common. We're going to give them the right permission. So plus W means that we are adding something and we are adding the right permission. So now if you have a look at the output of the ls-ld command against the common directory, you can see right now that um, rw and x has been given 
to, uh, to other. So let's go and find out if the user student can log in and uh, create a file called student.file1. Success! I can do that. And if you had to go and explore who the owning user is of the file, you'll see it would be the creator. And the owning group would be the primary group of that user. So what I'm going to do right now is that I'm going to go and create a user called Paul. So let's go and use uh, user add, and we're going to type in Paul over here. And I'm going to do something very interesting right now. I'm going to set the owning group of that directory to be the group Paul. So let's go and influence that. To do that, we use the command chone, or change ownership. And there are two aspects to ownership. You could be the owning user. You could also be the owning group. So what I'm going to do right now is that I'm only going to change the owning group. Now, we use a colon as a separator between the owning user and the owning group. So if I wanted to make the user student the owning user, and if I wanted to make the group Paul the owning group that is associated with common, I would use this command over here. So chone student colon Paul for common, and you can see that the transaction was successful. No error message. However, we want to validate our work. So let's go and run the ls-ld command against common. And you can see that the user student is indeed the owning user. And uh, members of the group Paul have read and execute permissions. So allow me now to go and log in as the user Paul. So let me go and switch user. We're going to switch user to Paul. And we're going to try and get into the common directory. And you can see that that transaction was successful. Because if you wanted to change into a directory, you would need the execute permission. If you wanted to do a directory listing, you would need the read permission. And we have that. So let's go and see what happens right now when I create a file called Paul.file1. And you can see over here that it says permission denied. Now, you may be drawn into thinking that, well, everyone has got the right permission. No, that's not the way it works. Remember, you process your permissions in order. Owning user, then owning group, and then other. And you stop at the first match. So what are Paul's permissions? Is Paul the owning user associated with common? The answer is no. The student user is. Great. Let's go to the next one. Is Paul a member of the owning group that is associated with common? Yes, Paul is a member. We can see over here that Paul, um, or the, the group that is associated with common, is the Paul group. The Paul group is the primary group associated with the user Paul. So we have a match, guys. You stop right there. You process no further. So the permissions that would be effective for the user Paul would be read and execute. So allow me to log out as the user Paul right now, and we're going to add one more user. So we're going to do a user add, and we're going to add the user George. And what we now want to do is determine what George's permissions are to that common directory. So nice and simple. Is George the owning user? No, student is. Is George a member of the group that is associated with that, uh, with that directory, which is Paul? No, George is not. We just created George. We didn't influence George's uh, groups yet. Uh, so George is not a member of the owning group. So therefore, George is qualified by other. And George should have read, write, and execute. So let's go and put that to the test right now. So we're going to switch user to George. And I'm going to change into the common directory. And I'm going to try and cr create a brand new file called uh, george.file1. And you can see that that transaction is successful, showing how the permissions flow works. So one more thing that I'm going to do right now, guys, is that I'm going to show you how, as the user root, and let's just go and get clear the output. I want to show you how I could go and uh, influence the permissions for the user student. So I'm going to say chmod, and we are going to affect the owning user or the user, and we are going to be taking away permissions right now. So the permissions that we are going to be taking away would be, uh, how about we do minus read, write, and execute. And we're going to do that for the directory common. So if you have a look at the permissions uh, that are set right now, you'll see that we have D for directory, and then we have dash, dash, dash. So in the absence of a permission, you just use dashes. So no permissions for the owning user. Now let's go and see how that, how that affects uh, the student user for the common directory. I can't do a directory listing. Let's change out of the directory. Let's go and change back in again. Permission denied. Let's go and see if I can create a file. So we're going to say common, and we're going to say student.file2. And again, transaction is unsuccessful. And once again, guys, just as a reminder, we always evaluate permissions in order. These are the permissions for the owning user, and the user student is the owning user. So we have a match. We stop right there. We are not allowed to process any further. Now, while I told you that there are only three permissions in the Linux file system, that was a little bit of a lie because we do have three other permissions. However, they are well beyond the scope of this technical overview. And with that, guys, I'm going to bring this chapter to an end. I will see you in the next video.